It's time now for Little Gladstone Local News. In the news, two rounds of interviews have concluded, and today the Wayne County Board of Education will reveal the final three candidate names for Wayne County's next school superintendent. That announcement is set for today at the board's work session, set for 6 p.m. at the Tech Center. WIFL fan will have three names for you tomorrow here on the local news. All the interviews have taken place at the Wayne County Airport, and the board narrowed the field of candidates from plus 20 down to three. Again, those three names to be revealed today at the board meeting. Other items on today's agenda include special education compliance report and a student support services report. Also, the COVID-19 update. Dr. Prince will give an update on the effect of the COVID-19 in the school system. Again, they have the name of the finalist of the superintendent's position under financial management. R.J. Aldridge will present the November 2020 financial report, and there's an executive session to discuss personnel. Comments by board members, comments by the school superintendent. As far as the COVID report, again, Reggie Burgess releases that every week. This is the chart for the week of February 1st to the 5th, and there's 5,053 students in Wayne County School System, 4,060. 4,602 traditional on-site learners. They had eight weekly positive COVID tests for that week of February 1st to the 5th. One Odom Elementary student, one Scrivener Elementary student, two at Arthur Williams, two at Martha Puckett, two at the high school. They had to have 995 quarantine for possible exposure, five at Martha Raw Smith, 25 at Joseph Elementary, 20 at James E. Bacon, three in Odom, six in Scriven, nine in Arthur Williams, 11 in Martha Puckett, and 16 Wayne County High School students. As far as employees, they have 840 employees in the Wayne County School System. They had seven weekly positive COVID-19 tests for the week of February 1st to the 5th, 11 quarantined for possible exposure, seven weekly positive case, one just elementary employee, two James E. Bacon, one Odom Elementary, one transportation employee, two food service employees, the quarantine, 11, two at Martha Raw Smith, one at Jessup Elementary, three at James E. Bacon, one at Odom, one in Scriven, one Wayne County High School, one food, serv- one food service employee, and one Board of Education employee. Again, that the chart for the week of February 1st through the 5th. Reminder, the Wayne County Commissioners are set to have their regular scheduled monthly meeting tomorrow night at 7 p.m. at the County Commissioner's Meeting Room. On the agenda under Old Business, Tracy Lindsay will discuss the Development Authority and Industrial Development Authority Appointments under new business, consider an approved resolution for Public Works Authority and resolution for the Parks Authority. Also discussing, consider an approved elected countywide chairman, consider an approved service delivery strategy, consider an approved the sale of property on Forest Drive. Also, several board appointments under items with the county administrator, consider an approved them in the 2021 budget for the district attorney's office. Items with the commissioner's executive sessions, discuss personnel. All that tomorrow night at 7 p.m. at the county commissioner's meeting room. We'll be back with more news after this word from our sponsor of the commercial messages, so please stay tuned. In other news, still no announcement from the city of Jessup with an update on the status of Jessup Police Chief Mike Lane, who remains suspended with pay at this point, despite the fact that at last Tuesday city commissioners meeting after a two and a half hour executive session, commissioners voted 6-0 at that meeting to have the city manager release the chief from his duties and responsibilities. The board met this past Friday in another call meeting, another two and a half hours executive session, but stated after that session that no action was taken. WIFOFM talked with several commissioners on Monday. They have stated to expect an announcement this Thursday. GBI conducted an investigation into allegations against the chief of police of sexual harassment by the three former female employees who worked under Chief Lane. GBI agent Stacy Carson informed WIFOFM last Friday that the GBI investigation is complete as on the desk of District Attorney Keith Higgins. WIFOFM has attempted to talk with District Attorney Keith Higgins in person, but only been able to talk with his director of communications, Kristen Fulford. She states that the DA has received the GBI file at the end of last week, but has not had time to review it thoroughly. Additionally, she says the rules of conduct prevent him from discussing an ongoing case with anyone in the media. WFLFM still attempted to talk with the district attorney in person. So far, that's been unsuccessful. It will be up to the district attorney whether criminal charges are filed against the chief of police, such as violation of oath of office, sexual harassment, sexual assault. All that's his call after he reviews the GBI report, which once again is finished. WIFLVM continue to follow the story as it develops. Unfortunately, there are more questions than answers, and it's difficult to get answers when no one's talking to the media. We will wait for the district attorney to review the file and wait for any announcement from the DA's office. We'll also continue to wait for the city to see how long it takes for the city manager to follow the direction of the city commission, which again voted 6-0 after a two-and-a-half-hour executive session to have the city manager released and also suspended the chief of police from his duties. Once again, it should be noted that the commissioners do not have the authority to hire and fire a police chief, but they do have the authority to hire and fire a city manager, city attorney, and a city clerk. Again, the request was by the commission to have the city manager release the police chief of his duties. 
That vote again, 6-0 as of this morning. That simply has not taken place. The chief remains suspended with pay at this time, and Captains Alex Reddish and Perry Morgan are running the department. Again, WFOFM will continue to follow the story as it develops. Apparently, we're waiting for Thursday of this week. We'll be back with some final news notes after this word from our sponsor of the commercial messages, so please stay tuned. Final notes in the news qualifying for the City of Odom special election set for March 16th is underway, and the qualifying ends at 12 noon on Wednesday. On Monday, Odom resident Josh Griffin qualified to run for the position of City Council. Once again, the qualifying period runs up until 12 noon Wednesday at the probate office. Councilman Willie McLaughlin resigned from his position as councilman in the City of Odom, looking to fill that position on the council with a special election. Once again, Josh Griffin qualified for that position as of Monday. Georgia government leaders and power companies announced plans Monday to build a high-speed Internet line that will reach 80,000 homes and businesses in middle Georgia, a major inroad into rural areas that lack online access. Construction will be the largest expansion of Internet service since the Georgia General Assembly passed a law back in 2019 allowing local electric membership corporations to offer broadband along with power. Beginning as soon as the summer, fiber Internet service with speeds of up to 1 gigabyte per second will be offered by Central Georgia EMC and Southern Rivers Energy. Projects expected to be completed within four years. Governor Brian Kemp at a Capitol press conference said, quote, This announcement represents the best of rural Georgia and what can happen here in the Peach State. EMC's private partners and community leaders working together on creative solutions to close the gap between those with Internet service and those without. Kemp has proposed that the state start funding Internet expansion with $20 million in this year's budget recommendation for the fiscal year and $10 million next year. That money would be awarded in the form of grants to rural communities. And a reminder, the Qantas Club of Jessup is firing up the griddles at Epworth United Methodist Church with their annual pancake supper to raise money for local ch- children's projects. This year's event will be held as a drive through in light of the current pandemic. Qantas Club of Jessup will offer pancakes and sausage for $6 per plate or two plates for $10. Plate pickup will be from 5 to 7 p.m. on February 18th at Epworth, located at 675 South 3rd Street in Jessup. Molly Hall, club president, says we know kids need Kiwanis in our community and around the world. This annual event allows Kiwanis to continue supporting causes that better children in our local community. Once again, the pancake supper is set for February 18th, tickets available at City Hall with Molly Hall or any Qantas Club member. That's going to do it for the latest in local news. Sports comes your way in a few minutes. Bob Morgan, Center for a great day.